Hi, welcome to Coin Flipping, Bayesian Probabilities, and Priors, Part 2. So in Part 1, we looked at flipping a coin that had a probability PH to come up heads and a probability PT to come up tails. We saw, for given values of PH and PT, how to calculate the probabilities of certain sequences of coin flips. Now, we're going to turn the question around. If we flip a coin and get a certain result, what can we infer about its values of pH and pt? So this exercise will be a simple model for how experimental measurements distinguish between competing hypotheses. Okay, let's get to our thought experiment. So let's say I have two types of coins. One is a fair coin. If you flip it, it will come up heads 50% of the time and tails 50% of the time. The other is a very unfair coin. It comes up heads 90% of the time and tails 10% of the time. So these coins look identical and you don't know which one is which. I'm going to put these two coins in a bag and have you choose one. I've shaken the bag and randomized the locations of the two coins in the bag enough that you are equally likely to choose either coin. You choose one of the two coins, flip it, and it comes up heads. Let's call the hypothesis that you chose the fair coin, hypothesis 1, and let's call the hypothesis that you chose the unfair coin, hypothesis 2. So here's our question. What is the probability of hypothesis 1, the hypothesis that you chose the fair coin? So in order to solve this, let's imagine that we went through this exercise many times. Each time, we choose a coin from the bag and flip it exactly once. So here, we're going to represent this large number of trials as 20 flips. And although we're representing this as only 20 flips, what we're really talking about is what would happen in a large number of trials, or what would happen in 20 flips on average. So half of the time you'd choose the fair coin, and the other half of the time you'd choose the unfair coin. So out of our 20 flips, we've labeled the first 10 as fair coins, and the last 10 as unfair coins. Now, these wouldn't happen in any particular order, but we've separated the fair and unfair coins just to think about them more easily. Okay, so of the times you choose the fair coin, 50% of the time it comes up heads, and 50% of the time it comes up tails. So of the 10 times out of our 20 trials that you choose the fair coins, we get five of them that come up heads, and five of them that come up tails. Of the times that you choose the unfair coin, 90% of the time it comes up heads, and 10% of the time it comes up tails. So out of our 10 trials where you chose the unfair coin, we've represented this as 9 trials that come up heads, and 1 trial that comes up tails. Okay, so we want to know the probability of hypothesis 1, the probability that you chose the fair coin. Or, in other words, in what fraction of the trials that the coin comes up heads have you chosen the fair coin? Okay, so let's look at our 20 flips. A total of 14 of them came up heads. Five of those were when you chose the fair coin. So the probability that you have chosen the fair coin is 5 out of 14, or 5 fourteenths, or approximately 36%. This is the answer that we're looking for. As a side note, the probability that you've chosen the unfair coin is 9 out of 14, or 9 fourteenths, or approximately 64%. Now, we don't want to draw a bunch of coins every time we want to solve a problem, so let's get that answer again, but without the picture. So when you take a coin from the bag, 50% of the time you choose the fair coin, and 50% of the time you choose the unfair coin. If you choose the fair coin, there is a 50% chance that it will come up heads. So in a large number of trials, 25% of the time, so that's 50% times 50%, you choose the fair coin, flip it, and it comes up heads. So let's remember this number to use on the next slide. On the other hand, if you choose the unfair coin, there is a 90% chance that it will come up heads. So in a large number of trials, 45% of the time, so that's 50% times 90%, you choose the unfair coin, flip it, and it comes up heads. Out of all of the trials, the coin comes up heads 70% of the time. So that's 25% of the time where you choose the fair coin and it comes up heads, plus 45% of the time where you choose the unfair coin and it comes up heads. 
So we take the fraction of the trials where you choose the fair coin and it comes up heads, 25%, and divide it by the fraction of trials where you choose either coin and it comes up heads. That's 70%. So this gives us the same answer we had before. 25% divided by 70% is approximately 36%. Again, we could have gotten the probability that you chose the unfair coin as 45% divided by 70%, which is approximately 64%. If this calculation without the picture is confusing for you, you can imagine going back to the picture, but use 100 trials instead of 20, and that will yield these numbers pretty easily. If you'd like to try an exercise on your own, here's a suggestion. If you chose a coin from the bag, flipped it once and got tails instead of heads, what would be the probabilities of hypothesis 1, that you chose the fair coin, and hypothesis 2, that you chose the unfair coin? We won't work this out in detail, but we'll give the answers near the end of the video. Okay, we should pause here for a side note. While we've gotten our above result using pictures, we should mention that we could have also gotten it with something called Bayes' theorem, which I've written here. So here the notation is as follows. P of A is the probability of A. P of A given B is the probability of A given the condition that B is true. And it's important to note that P of A is the probability of A without any information about B. So we wanted the probability of hypothesis 1, that you chose the fair coin, given that it came up heads. So here, A equals the hypothesis that you chose the fair coin, and b equals the event that it came up heads. So let's fill in the terms in Bayes' theorem. So we obtain that the probability that you chose the fair coin, given that the coin came up heads, is equal to the probability that the coin comes up heads, given that you chose the fair coin, times the probability that you chose the fair coin, divided by the probability that the coin comes up heads. Okay, so I've rewritten that here from the previous slide. Now let's put in some numbers. So we have that the probability that the coin comes up heads, given that you chose the fair coin, is 50%. The probability that you choose the fair coin is 50%. And the probability that the coin comes up heads is 70%. Note that the probability that the coin comes up heads is evaluated for all trials with no knowledge of whether you chose the fair or the unfair coin. So we get that the probability that you chose the fair coin, given that the coin comes up heads, is equal to 50% times 50% divided by 70%, which is about 36%. So Bayes' theorem does the same calculation that we did earlier in pictures and gives the same result. Now we'll go back to being more informal. And let's look at some more examples. So far, we've seen here that by flipping a coin a single time, we can obtain probabilities of hypotheses 1 and 2. We take data, and one hypothesis is favored, and the other is disfavored. So let's see what happens if we take more data, which in this case means flip the coin more than once. So let's slightly change our previous example. We'll keep the same two coins. I put them in a bag, and you choose one. But this time, you're going to flip the coin twice. And let's consider two scenarios. In scenario A, you get heads both times. In scenario B, you get heads on the first flip and tails on the second. So in each scenario, what is the probability of hypothesis 1, the hypothesis that you chose the fair coin? This time, it's harder to draw out all of the trials, so we'll illustrate this a different way. We'll write out all of the possible outcomes of a single trial with their probabilities. We're going to do this by looking at the outcomes and their probabilities at each step. The first step is choosing a coin, the second step is flipping the coin the first time, and the third step is flipping the coin the second time. Here we've drawn out all of the possible outcomes of the three steps and their probabilities. So in the first step, we choose a coin. There's a 50% chance that we choose the fair coin and a 50% chance that we choose the unfair coin. Then in the second and third steps, we flip the coin. And in each of those steps, if we chose the fair coin, we have a 50% chance of getting heads and a 50% chance of getting tails. And if we chose the unfair coin, we have a 90% chance of getting heads 
and a 10% chance of getting tails. So to get the probability of each final outcome, we multiply the probabilities at each step in the process. So for example, if we want the probability of choosing the unfair coin and getting tails on both flips, we multiply the probability of choosing the unfair coin, which is 50%, times the probability of the first flip of the unfair coin yielding tails, which is 10%, times the probability of the second flip of the coin yielding tails, which is 10%. So in this case, we would get a final probability of 0.5%. So we multiply out the probabilities of each of the individual steps, and then we get the probabilities of the final outcome. Now we can consult this chart to get our desired results. So for scenario A, we want to know the following. You choose a coin and flip it twice. Both flips come up heads. What is the probability that you chose the fair coin? So to do this, we're going to look at the two ways, i.e. either choosing the fair coin or choosing the unfair coin, that you can flip the coin twice and get heads both times. Then we find out what fraction of that time you chose the fair coin. Okay. So here's our chart. So you can either have chosen the fair coin and gotten heads both times with a probability of 12.5%, or you could have chosen the unfair coin and then gotten heads both times with a probability of 40.5%. So those are the two numbers that we need for our calculation. So in 12.5% of trials, we choose the fair coin and then both flips come up heads. And in 40.5% of trials, we choose the unfair coin, and then both flips come up heads. So in a total of 53% of trials, both flips come up heads. So the probability that you chose the fair coin, given that both flips came up heads, is equal to 12.5% over 53%, which is about 24%. Now, let's do scenario B, where the first flip comes up heads and the second one comes up tails. Again, given these results of the coin flips, we want to know the probability of hypothesis 1, the hypothesis that you have chosen the fair coin. So we look at all of the ways that you can have the first flip come up heads and the second come up tails. So the probability that we would choose the fair coin, have the first flip come up heads, and the second flip come up tails is 12.5%. On the other hand, the probability that we would choose the unfair coin, have the first flip come up heads, and the second flip come up tails is 4.5%. So those are the two numbers that we need. Okay, so in 12.5% of trials, we would choose the fair coin, have heads come up on the first flip, and tails come up on the second. And in 4.5% of trials, we would choose the unfair coin, have heads come up on the first flip, and tails come up on the second. So the first flip yields heads and the second yields tails in a total of 17% of trials. So if the first flip came up heads and the second tails, the probability that you chose the fair coin was 12.5% divided by 17%, which is approximately 74%. Now, so far these results might seem a bit unimpressive. We haven't been able to strongly disfavor either hypothesis one or hypothesis two in any of these examples. But what happens if you flip the coin many times? So here we'll give some results for the case where you choose a coin and flip it 10 times. We won't work through the math, but we'll just give the results. We'll give the probabilities of the two hypotheses for each of the possible numbers of heads and tails that you would get out of 10 flips. So here we have the probabilities of hypothesis one and hypothesis two for each of the possible number of obtained heads and tails out of 10 flips. So for example, if you flip the coin 10 times and it came up heads five times and tails five times, there is a 99.4% chance that you chose the fair coin. But if it came up heads every time, there is a 99.7% chance that you chose the unfair coin. Now, these outcomes are not all equally likely. So for example, out of 10 flips, you'll get all 10 coming up tails only 0.05% of the time, but you'll get nine out of 10 flips coming up heads 20% of the time. But most importantly, for a large fraction of trials, you have a very good idea of which coin you chose. In fact, only for the combinations where you have seven heads and three tails, or eight heads and two tails, do both hypotheses have probabilities over 10%. 
So we see here that by taking more data, we have more knowledge about which hypothesis is true. Okay, so we've seen here that by taking more data, which means flipping the coin more than once, we can become more certain of which hypothesis is true, which coin we selected. In fact, if we had sufficient time, we could flip the coin enough to tell the difference between even very similar hypotheses, like whether we have a fair coin or one that comes up heads 51% of the time. Okay, so here in part two, we've seen that we can say something about the probabilities of hypothesis one and hypothesis two by taking data. We've also seen that by taking more data, we can be more certain of which hypothesis is correct. In part three, we'll see what happens if we vary the coins we put in the bag. This will teach us about an important concept called priors. Now, before we go, I promised the answer to the two coin exercise posed in the video. So, if you had flipped the coin once and gotten tails instead of heads, what would the probabilities be of hypothesis one, that you chose the fair coin, and hypothesis two, that you chose the unfair coin? So, we can get the answer by looking back at our 20 flips. Of these, a total of six came up tails. Five of these are when the fair coin came up tails, and one was when the unfair coin came up tails. So the probability that you've chosen the fair coin is 5 6, or about 83%, and the probability that you've chosen the unfair coin is 1 6, or about 17%.